Leia, between XRP, XLM, XDC, who's been the biggest winner of the market this year? Oh. Not too interested, huh? You just want to go back to bed? Well, guess what? We're going to talk about the biggest winner this year. We're talking XRP, XDC, and XLM, the X's. We're going to compare it to ETH. We're going to talk a little bit of news, learn along the way, and maybe we'll get Leia to even perk up a little bit. Heat map, Bitcoin sitting at 35259, ETH 1912, XRP 652XM 12.5 with XDC. Let's zoom in so that you can all see. You ready for it? 5.2. Now, recently the move of XDC really hasn't been that juicy. And I want to talk about that along with the price of XRP XM. Look, look at this. Okay, this is the last month for XDC. All right, starting off the month here, and you're like, okay, really, what's the action? 4.95 cents. We're at 5.2 now. So like I said, in the last 30 days, you really haven't seen much movement in XDC. But don't worry. I've got something to show you, XDC fans. Now, XRP fans are sitting there going, well, wait a minute. How do we stack up? Oh, well, I'll get you. I'll get you too. But first, the market is starting to change a little bit. And I think we need to pay attention to this because people that were looking for on-chain development to spur growth, right, to spur that token you know, price action movement, you might want to look somewhere else. Stablecoin activity takes the crown from DeFi in Q3. Stablecoin saw 45% growth in active addresses and a 41% increase in transactions between the first and third quarter. Now, I did a video on Stellar a few weeks ago that talked about Stellar transactions are actually down like 40-50% during the year. So you're seeing stablecoin action moving on up. On-chain activity for a lot of these chains starting to go down. Uh, their DEXs and so forth, you're seeing that as well. Anyways, contrastingly, DeFi experienced significant drops in daily active addresses and transactions. Moreover, these protocols went from having over 1 million daily average transactions in the first quarter to 786,000 in the third quarter. So like about a 20% retracement in usage of that. Stable coins. It wasn't until July that stable coins solidified dominance in the market with transactions surpassing those of DeFi protocols on various networks, including Ethereum, Arbitrum, Polygon, Optimism, and more. Now, mind you, there's been some of us out there, I'm, I'm included in this pool, that's sitting here going, gosh, Tether, Money Printer, go burr, when is this thing going to implode? But it doesn't. In fact, we've seen USDC just fall just to, to nothing, right? Struggle with market, not to nothing. You guys know what I'm talking about. Struggling market cap wise, while USDT is just rolling. So just shocking to see this. And that's why I wanted to share this with you. See, we're learning, we're having some fun, a little bit casual vibe today. Stable coins are the dominant player in terms of daily active users. They have eclipsed even the likes of DeFi, which has been the traditional stronghold in previous years. The rise can be attributed to the inherent stability and value predictability that stablecoins offer, making them an attractive entry point for both new and seasoned users. So we're talking about store of value, right? Isn't that what they're basically saying? Because stablecoins value predictability, you know what your yields are going to be. You know what your cash out value is going to be. It's fairly much, it's a good store of value. Think of like a savings account, right? That could offer four, five, six, seven, eight percent, right? I mean, that's how they're kind of looking at it. So again, store of value. And we know USDT is in the lead. By the way, PayPal PYUSD is still a big nothing burger. Ape Fest Hong Kong was a surreal gathering of the NFT faithful. Okay, I'm bringing this story up because every, every, I guess every item, every market has a niche, has a community for it. Now, the size of the communities vary. But let's say you want to collect like uh, 1920s uh, silverware from Gorham, right? There's going to be a very small niche group. Now, are there enthusiasts about it? Yes, of course, right? There's going to be Gorham 1920s silverware enthusiasts out there. It's going to be a very small community. And, and so like the fans that are in like, you know, Ape, right? Um... Uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, NFTs, all the like, okay? It's not that they're going away. It's just that their communities are just getting smaller. Does it mean it's less impactful and less like a presence is smaller? No, not necessarily because it's all about the individual user. 
If you're a really big fan of 1928 Gorm stainless, or I'm sorry, Gorm silver, my bad on that, sterling silver, then you're just like, dude, you're in heaven. It's, it doesn't matter to you if you've got 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 or a million people. Now, granted, if you like, you know, what you're doing, you always want more people to kind of get in on the juicy action with you, especially if you're looking at it for speculative reasons. But I still wanted to share with you that you're, you're going to see these communities shrink, but I don't think you're going to see them go away. I think you're always going to have your diehard groups and you're always going to have enthusiasts out there. It doesn't matter what the move is. Like I said, with the Gorham Silver, there is. There's a there's groups out there that are chat about that kind of stuff. And But there's small groups. But there's still groups. So if something that you're into, I, I don't really want to say like I'm afraid of things going away completely. I just think that the communities will shrink more so than rather go away. All right, let's get into some chart action. Let's talk. We use Bitcoin a lot as a marker. Well, now we're going to use ETH because we're going to talk strictly alts. We're going to talk alt performance. All right, XRP, XDC, and XLM. Ethereum is red, XDC is in light blue, XRP in purple, and XLM in green. Now, you can see XDC making the biggest move year to date, and that's what this time period is right here. XDC up 100%, XRP 91%, XLM 76 with ETH at 59. We've been talking about ETH as a laggard in the market for quite some time. We've also been talking about XLM as a laggard in the market, but when you compare the two here, you can see that XLM is edging it out by about 17%. Now, laggard in ETH, I don't think any of us would ever have used two years ago. And I believe that's something that we all have to start paying more attention to. The market isn't always going to have the layout that it is. You're not always going to see the same market cap rankings, right? You're going to see some big changes. You're going to see some resilient players near the top, and you're going to see some people that underperform, of course. But there's going to be change. Now, change is tough. And, and okay, the reason I brought up the story about Board API Club, right, and the whole idea of Gorham Steel, it has to do with like relevance, time, size, and all that, right, in the crypto community and, and how stable coins are pivoting. Okay, I want you to piece all of this together. It's all about change, right? Stable coins weren't always the big player on the scene. Jeez, I'm going to leave that in because even I mess up. The, the stable coin market wasn't that attractive a while ago, but now you've got more people moving into it. Tether, just money printer, go burn. And so you're seeing these changes, these evolutions. Now, we're going to get back to charts, but keep that evolution stuff in mind. Okay, XDC, biggest winner. Okay, biggest winner this so far year to date. Now, again, we went recently into XDC and said, yo, this has been a snooze, my man. Yeah, it's been a snooze as of late, but it's made it steam earlier. In fact, up almost 250% at one point in time this year. So, laggard as of late, yes. Store of value better than the rest over this last year, yes. ETH losing its kind of store of value status? I mean, ETH losing its growth, its oomph on the market? I mean, we're talking now about ETH trying to get to that 2000 mark. I mean, what's... The, come on now. That's soft. That's weak sauce, right? All right, now let's look at another chart. This is XDC here over the last three months. XDC is always moving on its own, and that's worth fairly mentioning, okay? It's worth mentioning because it's somewhat insulated, isn't it? For those of you out there that watch crypto, and when you watch it in terms of the charts, one compared to the other, right? When you look at pairings, when you look at them paired against each other and so forth, XDC moves to its own beat. It's harder to get. It's not listed all over the place like a lot of the other ones out there. A lot of the other ones, they move in this big blob, but XCC is doing something different. Like I said, it made a bigger move. It was delayed on the Taurus pump here. Look at this. This is Taurus pump action right here. Look how delayed that XDC move is. August 3rd, all the way from the 12th of July. So, I mean, we're talking, what, three and a half weeks of delay right there? And then you can see here, like, the movements are just different. Now, this whole time before, you can see it move kind of with it. But that delayed movement in August that pumped it up to 250 really separated it from the group. Now, looking at XDC again, you're looking at now going, okay, well, wait a minute. This is really boring burger. Not much is going on. 
Boring Burger also sounds a lot like what everyone? Stable coins. And we've seen that the market is moving towards that. Now, not that we're seeing XDC grow towards that or anything like that, but people seem to be pivoting also to lower risk prospects. Now, you are still seeing people play the XRP, hey, we're gonna go to the moon rally, XLM is gonna be peer-to-peer -peer payment across the world, you know, that whole spiel and all that stick. But what we're seeing and what's actually happening is that the markets are reacting a little bit differently. They're starting to change. ETH, which was a dominant figure, now in this last year just to sucked. And even last year, ETH wasn't that juicy. In fact, look at this. I'll zoom out to the two-year mark and check it out. In the two-year mark, you still got XDC up at the top, XRP next. Zoom out five years and I'll go a little bit more just so we can see inception time and check it out. XDC, the clear winner by a large margin. So a lot of it's gonna come down to when you got into the market but I wanted to show everyone that the market is starting to change. Things that we thought of as, I guess, concrete as stables are not stable anymore. Stable coins ruling the roost over DeFi and DeFi was king for years in the crypto space. And I wanna blow your mind with one last concept. So if you're watching, comment down below last concept and you are an awesome person. So you know how like, ETH was like the dominant figure and you're looking at like XDC and XRP just crushing it. Watch this. Watch what happens now when we compare ETH to micro strategies. Year to date, same thing. Year to date, ETH 33 and change. Micro strategies, 138%. Ticker symbol for micro, Michael Saylor's micro strategy. And he has been big on Bitcoin and has just been trying to hammer the hell out of it. So we talk about ETH dominance, right? And how ETH is kind of going to the wayside. Now look at ETH compared to something that is playing off Bitcoin and Bitcoin holdings in a public company. Just some chill observational vibes today. But I wanted to bring up the idea of change, how things change. ETH isn't always going to be the big kingpin of the alms. Bitcoin might not always be the big one on the block. AOL used to corner the market for the internet. And now what's AOL? I mean, I still have an AOL email address because I'm old school cool. But seriously, relevance, you know, market share, market size, market cap, it's the change is happening. I... I think we just need to start being aware and that's why I wanted to show you an observational video just kind of looking out at stuff just zooming out a little bit not getting lost in kind of like the that daily price action grind what's the five minute chart what's the 15 minute no let's let's zoom out let's see how our friends out here are playing and what I was shocked to see is that out of them all XDC really was the one that just stole the thunder now, was Leia excited with this news? No, not really. She's sleeping here, hanging out on the shows with me, just chilling out, talking crypto. Well, she's not talking crypto. She's sleeping. But hey, I'm going to keep watching the markets. We've got uh, precious metals, commodities firing up tonight. A couple big auctions I'm watching tonight. Some gold and silver buying, potentially. Got a recovery run to do today, along with a gym session. That on top of my three-hour run I did yesterday, my legs are still really sore. What are you doing? Let me know in the comments below. And are you rocking the Sunday pajama pants? Take care. Have a great rest of your day.